السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ وعلیکم السلام ورحمۃ یا رب لک الحمد کما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظیم سلطانك اللهم ربنا لک الحمد بما خلقتنا ورزقتنا وهديتنا وفرجت عنا اللهم لك الحمد بالايمان ولك الحمد بالاسلام ولك الحمد بالقران اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي ربي زدنا علما اللهم فقهنا في الدين اللهم انا نسالك علما نافعا وعملا متقبلا ورزقا طيبا اللهم ثبتنا عند الموت بلا اله الا الله امين يا رب العالمين اللهم صل على محمد وعلى ال محمد سوره ناس ان شاء الله we are going to continue with it um, and uh, in last Uh, sessions we have seen a uh, beautiful connection uh, uh, with this surah that should be in our life we should adopt it we need to make some effort and we saw how beautifully allah subhanahu wa ta'ala connected his beautiful name uh, rabbin nas malikin nas and ilahin nas uh, with this uh, surah to make us that yes to make us realize that uh, we need to seek his uh, protection and he is only ila he is the only rab he is the only uh, malik who can keep us uh, protected from any evils of shaitan which is going to be a great uh, um, like source of uh, uh, evil for us uh, if we fall a prey of him and inshallah in these ayat we will see how he can affect us how the whispering of shaitan can be very harmful to us so with that inshallah we're going to continue so we are on aya number 4 min sharril waswasil khannas so uh, let's do the arab first uh, min is harf uh, jar we all know sharri is is a majrur the victim of min al waswas and al khannas is basically mosuf sif over here and uh, they are not regular words subhanallah we will see that uh, their uh, uh, the beauty in these words and uh, the perfect use that allah subhanahu wa taala made by using these words uh, uh, in our uh, session today so al waswas al khannas are mosuf sif and both are ism mubalagha Uh, when we say samubalga that shows that it has uh, abundance in it the act is uh, happening over and over it's not one time act so there is abundance uh, uh, in the act in his waswas uh, so basically very easy uh, arab of uh, this aya and then al khannas i was looking in the dictionary uh, al khannas literally means the one who withdraws when the name of god is mentioned subhanallah so uh, al khannas uh, and al waswas we will see uh, basically al waswas is uh, from waw seen waw seen uh, waswasa is the root letter uh, and uh, th- this is not regular root letter uh, regular uh, three form rather it is four letter verb was was up uh and it means to speak under one's breath so whispering right and uh, uh, then we have a noun from this uh, uh, was was is was was with marbuta so this is the noun of it the regular noun and then the plural of this uh, is wasavas or yeah was wasavis wasa vis and uh, that is uh, refer to temptations 
And uh, then we have Viswas, uh, which is uh, um, Vaswas, which is the one we have over here, right? So Vaswas is, is a Mubalga, and the plural again is a uh, Vasa, Vasavis. So Vasavis is the uh, plural of this Vaswas. And inshallah, we will see in a lot of details about uh, that particular word, uh, Vaswas. And then Khalnas as No voice. Okay, I'm so sorry. Uh, you guys were not able to hear me in the from the very beginning, or no, no, we lost you. No, just two minutes before, I guess. Yeah, two, three we minutes. lost you on the uh, explanation of was 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 was. Okay, inshallah, we're gonna start from there. So you guys are able to see the screen? Yes. Yes, we can see the screen. Yeah. Oh. Okay, so lingu linguistically, uh, shar is the opposite of khair. And shar is universally known as evil. We, uh, evil that can cause us harm. And uh, Urdu speaker know the word sharara, like uh, sharara is basically a spark of flame or a bit of fire that can jump, right? When we are close to fire uh, and uh, that can harm us, right? So shar is something which is evil, which can cause us harm or pain. And over here, uh, we, we are seeing that min sharril vaswasil khannas Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has used over here. 
uh, he uh, he didn't use minshar with shaitan even though uh, al waswas we will see that uh, basically it is referring to shaitan because it has al on it right and this al is making it uh, specific and scholars are saying that this al is typically uh, like referring to shaitan so this is uh, uh, the characteristic of shaitan uh, is mentioned so al waswas it uh, literally mean shaitan but allah subhanahu wa taala did not use the word shaitan over here he didn't say min sharri shaitan rather he said uh, al waswas al khannas uh, so why is that so allah did not say shaitan or shaitana being consumed with the, uh, rage or uh, shaitan literally mean the one who is consumed with rage right and uh, the one who is away from the mercy of allah subhanahu wa taala rather he used the word al waswas al khannas and inshallah we will see why is that so now uh, uh, the word al waswas uh, which we are going to translate as uh, um, whisperer right so waswasa uh, waswasa is basically whispering uh, like someone is uh, saying something very quiet right that is uh, waswasa and another word uh, could be used hums hums is also uh, is kind of very quiet uh, voice right that is hums in tajweed we have uh, uh, this term hums uh, some letters they have uh, hums in it and the quality of hums so and allah subhanahu wa taala from hums he could have used the word hamis hamis is some file right the one who do um, kind of uh, uh, like some suggestion he is giving some whispering someone is doing but he rather use al waswas because hums hums can be good or bad suggestion right so hums could be good or bad but allah subhanahu wa taala is saying over here al waswas kind of suggesting us that uh, Uh, the whispering of uh, shaitan is going to be all evil all negative right so only negative suggestion and whispering al waswas and hums could be good or bad and then al waswas uh, if we look in the dictionary that's what you will find sautul khuliya wal hamsul khafiya or khafiyu so saut mean voice why what kind of voice huli huli is like uh, you know um, some kind of uh, zaver some kind of ornaments the ladies wear and typically it is uh, that, uh, about bangles because bangles make kind of noise right so it, it says that literally it it is uh, like the voice of uh, jewelry or bangles a minor sound that barely can be recognized or detectable that is uh, al waswas so sautul huli huliyu wal hamsul khafiyu and uh, another example given uh, is that uh, you know back then uh, people used to hunt animals right uh, through their uh, they have some hunting animals like a dog they train right and uh, now they are hunting some other animal through this dog so this hunter and the dog they are hiding in a place and they are waiting for the right moment to attack on this animal right so now uh, when this hunter see that okay this is the right moment or let's say the dog is trying to jump when there is not right moment so what will uh, hunter will do hunter will stop in a very quiet voice to this dog that not not yet not yet or when he want to say yes then he is going to like uh, do in a a waswas way that now you can jump right so basically literally they say that uh, this is the al waswas this is the uh, waswasa this is the whispering and the beauty of arabic language we can see that 
even seen. How we say letter seen? Seen. Seen, right? Everyone say it. So what do you see? It is kind of whispering already in it, right? So subhanallah, uh, we can see that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen a word already kind of suggesting us that it is going to be a kind of whispering. And then the Qarul Lafaz. The Qarul Lafaz means if we see that root letter, we said that this is four letter verb. Vaswasa. So this is not three letter, rather it is Rubai, fail Rubai, Vaswasa. So what we are saying, wow, seen, wow, seen. So seen is repeating over and over. Takrarul Lafaz. So in, that is also suggesting that uh, action is happening in uh, continuation and repetition. Subhanallah, right? So the language itself is so beautiful and the uh, like choice of the uh, words we can see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all is suggesting that, okay, vasvasa, that is going, going to be very quiet, very quiet, uh, like kind of suggestion coming inside uh, from us because our nafs sometimes can be trained by Kareen, by shaitan, that that nafs can uh, prompt us to do something that we are not supposed to, right? And the same word like a vasvasa, we can uh, see the word zalzala, right? Zalzala. And even, even zalzala, you see when we say z, so that is, we have whispering kind of uh, vibration, right? So zalzala, and again, this is a reputation. And what happened when zalzala is happening? So zalzala, the earth shake, then it pause, and then we always have another uh, uh, shaking, right? So uh, same is this uh, vasvasa work. So shaitan put some vasvasa, and if when we remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then he cannot stay there. He need to step back. He's going to take a pause, and then he's going to take another moment when he see that uh, our heart or our tongue is not uh, involved in the zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's going to attack again, right? So attack, pause, and then attack again. So zalzala is an, another example of it. And then we have another word, silsala, silsila, right? Silsila is what? The series of mountains. So one after the other we see, when we see the series of mountains, you're gonna see that, okay, one mountain ending and then next is starting. So this shows that Vasvasa is uh, evil. We already said as compared to Hums, Hums can be good, but uh, Vasvasa is uh, evil. So this is evil whispering. Uh, so he is going to whisper, then there is going to be a pause if we are not entertaining that vasvasa, what he has put at first place, if we uh, just remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we fix our action, we know, no, no, I'm not gonna do it, okay? So then uh, by the zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he gonna step back, he gonna take a pause, and then whenever he find another moment, he is going to uh, process uh, the same thing again. So there is continuation and there is reputation in Vasvasa. So how beautiful, uh, Subhanahu Ta'ala, even that uh, word, we can see that uh, uh, all the letters and uh, uh, they are kind of uh, referring to the reputation and continuation and uh, even the voice is kind of whispering in Vasvasa, right? So Subhanallah, this, this is the beauty of the language of the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, then uh, we are on the word al-waswas. And uh, how we, uh, first of all, al-waswas, al-khannas, right? Both are ism over here. How do we know? This al is telling us, right? So this al is referring that uh, this is ism. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has used ism over here while he could have used the verb, right? 
but why not verb? Because we know that uh, verb is weak. In what sense? Because it has a time limit, right? So uh, it's uh, verb does not have continuity. But the as compared to noun, noun are more uh, like they are free of time. So they are free of time. That is telling us, okay, this vasvasa is not going to stop. It is going to continue, right? So that's why the noun form is used instead of verb, uh, verb form. Then look at the word vasvas. And how we are translating vasvas, we are saying min from <clears throat> shar, the mischief, al vasvas of the whisperer, al khannas who withdraws after his whisper. So al vasvas, the translation is as a whisperer. When we say whisperer, <clears throat> it sounds like some file, right? The doer, someone is doing that action. So for example, we say Nasara and the doer is Nasirun, sorry, some file gonna be Nasirun, right? And we're gonna say helper. Nasirun is helper, so that is some file. Over here, vis, um, whisperer. So this is some file supposed to be here. And if we see this word, uh, it has uh, vas vasa, you vas visu. I think I uh, put it somewhere in other slide. So vas vasa, you vas visu, and then vas vasa vita marbuta is going to be the noun. And then fahuwa, the isam file should be mu vas visun. <clears throat> isam file should be mu was visun but it is not mu was visun rather it is was was so what is that word and even though we are translating as a is some file so basically mu was visu should be the regular uh, is some file could have been used over here or the word was wasa the noun could have been used over here, right? But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used vaswas, which is isam mubalagha. So isam mubalagha has been used over here to show the abundance, to show the uh, continuation, to show the kind of uh, quality and quantity, basically quantity, right? So like he is not going to give up. He is going to keep trying, even though we see that, okay, the word was, was itself, it's so much reputation and continuation, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us how dangerous can be that was, was by using isamubalaga, that it is not going to stop. There is no way that we can be uh, like uh, we can protect ourselves against this vaswasa because this vaswasa is so continuous. Maybe I can uh, um, protect myself or I can uh, like ignore that vaswasa for one day or two days or three days, but how long I can uh, stop myself unless I'm in the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? So that is mubalagha. And uh, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has used al -was -was, uh, sorry, was -was the noun, or mu -was -was the regular is some file, it should not have that much uh, reputation or continuation in it, right? It could be just one time suggestion. So uh, uh, this al -was -was is some mubalga is uh, referring that uh, uh, like uh, how uh, con like it's not going to stop ever, basically. So vasvasa is used in this ayah in mubalaga, hyperbolized or maximum form, the extreme whisperer, the one who is continuously performing this job, obsessed with it, he does not stop. 
and then uh, why al waswas is used the extreme whisperer so this al making it uh, proper specific right so that's why i said as i said before this al is uh, making it proper making it uh, very specific and referring to who shaitan so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just if it was just min sharril waswasil khannas then it, uh, it it wasn't referring to uh, uh, iblis itself it could be the other shaitan but al waswas is referring to iblis it's uh, himself and we know that uh, this iblis uh, they have a regular meeting uh, every single day and uh, he collect all his uh, members and uh, he take report what they did and he suggest them right so all these suggestions that are coming from our nafs or our kareen or other shaitan or other people whoever is a helper of uh, these uh, alwaswas basically these are the suggestion coming from who from iblis right so this alwas alwaswas is basically referring to iblis one who does it greatly continuously and he is really good at it so quality and quantity both are in it how he is really great at it because we know his age he is from day 1 as hazrat adam alayhi salam was uh, uh, on this earth he was there right so since that time he has sees all the psychological pattern of every human being right so this is how he play around with us so he is really great at it no doubt about it so he knows our weakness wherever we are weak he try to attack over there so the one who does the whispering can do more evil than just whisper so over here it is one thing is that uh, uh, this is uh, it says it almost uh, ijma or uh, consensus that uh, this is referring to iblis because of this al and that make is very uh, definitive and specific to one uh, character which is the character of iblis so he is really great at it uh, um, uh, doing it and he is doing it continuously so that's that is the uh, al we can uh, refer to and secondly uh, the one who does the whispering why allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has used all over here why allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is referring to iblis specifically over here because the one who does the whispering can do more evil than just a whisper so just this whispering he he gonna uh, bring more harm to us through this whispering this is not just a whispering he can do more harm to us if we are not under the protection of allah subhanahu wa taala so when we ask allah to protect us from the whisperer we are asking allah subhanahu wa taala to protect us from all the evils so we are not just uh, taking protection against the whispering rather we are taking protection from all kinds of evil all kinds of harm all kinds of pain all kinds of uh, uh, despairing like uh, he can create uh, uh, you someone here right so he can we are asking allah's protection from all these kinds of uh, evils if we ask allah subhanahu wa taala to protect us from the whisper no we uh, please mute the mic someone's mic is on please uh, mute your mic so if we ask allah to protect us from the whis- uh, whispers we would only be protected by the evil whisper right but now we are asking allah subhanahu wa taala to protect us from all his evils right so we are asking uh, protection from that whisperer right so the whisperer which is shaitan so whatever shaitan uh, can cause harm we are asking protection from all these harms the word already had a repetition with it within it right was was a visadat but then 
to make it uh, hyperbolized or uh, mobile form make a strong emphasis on the whispering being continuous. And this word is strong from surf point of view and from linguistic point of view, both we saw that, okay? From surf, we saw that uh, um, like uh, uh, the root, so was was a scene is um, kind of uh, um, repeating, right? And even the letter scene has a whispering in it. And then linguistic uh, point of view, we say that this is a mobile form, right? So how strong uh, uh, like uh, uh, the word is uh, uh, through the lens of uh, surf and uh, linguistic uh, or grammatically point of view, this uh, alvaswa. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from this uh, alvaswa al khannas. And now, uh, an example of uh, whispering of shaitan, winning. So how this uh, vasvasa, that how this uh, uh, Iblis, uh, his whispering can win. One very small example is uh, shaitan inside people to get angry. Because anger is the manifestation of uh, ego or arrogance. This is what he want. He is the uh, greatest example of uh, uh, um, being arrogant and he is the most egoistic uh, uh, being ever on the earth. Because how we know that? Because he confronted Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who has dared to confront Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Right? So we can see how arrogant he is. And he want to instill, he want to put that arrogance in our heart. Right? So that, uh, that is his uh, greatest tool. And these days we can see it so easily, uh, all these uh, uh, materialistic world, how it is making us uh, so um, like uh, arrogant and so uh, egoistic about ourselves, right? So when he put arrogance in it, when this occurs, we should say, Auzubillahi min shaitan rajim I seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from shaitan, the rejected one. When we get angry, we might not even seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? Out of arrogance or maybe we are mad, we are not uh, uh, like uh, on the right state of mindset right now, right? So when we are uh, like uh, in... Uh, uh, when we are in Hussa, when we are mad at someone, then we, we cannot think right. So Shaitan has succeeded twice, basically. First of all, he was able to incite anger in it. Someone was being rude. I have a choice. I can be rude back to that person or I can be quiet. Right? I can ignore because uh, in quran Pak we have uh, Aya literally telling us that when you meet uh, those people who uh, do not have manners or they are illiterate in a sense of like they do not have any ikhlaq or anything, then we need to say qalu salama, right? Just send peace on them and leave that place, right? We don't have to get in into the argument. But that is really hard when somebody is attacking on you and you do not respond. Yes, you can respond in the same manner that is allowed, but uh, actually it's not going to happen. Whenever we respond, we go far more in our response, right? So first of all, he incite anger. Secondly, then he make us stop or make, it, make us forget to seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's protection at that time. Even though we know um, that uh, uh, we need to say auzu billahi min shaitan rajim at that time when we are angry or mad and how uh, like uh, difficult it is to say auzu billahi min shaitan rajim but we are so consumed with the anger that we are uh, either going to forget or even though we remember we're not gonna say it so this is uh, we can see that how strong uh, uh, the whispering of shaitan could be or how evil that anger could be, right? 
so it is only when we humble ourselves by remembering allah subhanahu wa taala seeking his protection or following the advice of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam what was the advice of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam we should do at the time of madness when we are mad at someone first thing we need to say auz billahi minash shaitanir rajim this is the very first thing and inshallah shaitan gonna go away from us then if uh, um, um, after that or if that doesn't work then maybe we can drink a water glass of water that is going to really help change your position so if you were standing you can sit down if you were sitting then you can lie down even so you need to change your position or you can just walk away from that place so change your position and then do wudu that is also a great advice so at the time of uh, uh, like ussa we can do wudu and inshallah that can help us but and when we do when we do take all these steps what going to happen shaitan is going to step back from us and that really helps i uh, like i experience that that when i am mad if i change my position if i just walk away or i can just drink a glass of water and say auz billahi minash shaitanir rajim i can put uh, myself in, uh, into a into senses and in a place so inshallah these are great advices and this requires effort against the whispering of the shaitan who wants us to remain angry and arrogant because when we are angry and arrogant our senses are kind of blocked we are not going to see uh, things in a right direction and then star uh, shaitan easily is going to overtake us so that is his greatest tool to make us mad on someone or something and uh, we need to always remember that uh, anger only suit to allah subhanahu wa taala we do not as a, as an earth we need to look how uh, tiny we are right so we are like a like a speck in front of uh, allah subhanahu wa taala's all creations look how big are, are all these creations so we are kind of speck of it uh, part of nothing we are just a part of dust if we can think of so does anger suit us at all then no so anger literally or takabbur it says that takabbur is a, a suit allah subhanahu wa taala right and uh, this is basically a rida of allah subhanahu wa taala so and when any human being is doing any takabbur then basically they are pulling the rida of uh, allah subhanahu wa taala nauz billah right so we need to uh, like very careful then like do not get uh, very excited when we are angry we need to control our anger we need to learn how to control our, our anger and then uh, we are keep saying that okay Uh, al waswas and even you know, we will see in uh, al khannas is showing that okay there is no break in this waswasa the shaitan is not uh, taking any break in, uh, in his job right to make us do something evil why because he has a very clear purpose and agenda what is his agenda that he want to take us in hell fire with him because that is the promise that is the oath he took in front of allah subhanahu wa taala he dare to take a oath uh, in front of allah subhanahu wa taala saying that okay i am not going to leave any human kind alone i will try my best to um, uh, to make them lose the path to make them lose the purpose of their life and i he really want us to end up with him in the hellfire 
and he is working hard than any of us, right? Because he wants us to be in the hellfire with him. So how we can uh, cope with that? We need to work harder than him in taking protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, then um, moving on, al waswas we saw that uh, how much continuation and how much uh, reputation is in this word. And look at the next word now, al khannas And we can see Shadda over there, right? Again, so much reputation in there. So al khannas literally means the one who uh, retreats, steps back continuously. Shadda is showing the continuity. So uh, we have another, uh, uh, the word khuns uh, is used in Quran Ipah, and it says, Fala uqusimu bil khunnas. So uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, I swear by the khunnas. And what is khunnas? This is Surah Takbir. Khunnas is uh, a star that flicks. Sometimes you look at the star. Uh, on, uh, in the sky at night, you see a star and uh, you look somewhere else and you go back and you don't find that star, right? So that is basically the star that uh, flicks or twinkle or disappears. That is Hunnas. And uh, hun, uh, Huns is something that disappears suddenly. And even uh, in the dictionary, it says, uh, you know, if you look at the rabbit, so rabbit uh, do su such uh, um, movements to his nose, right? He is uh, uh, lifting up and down his nose. That motion, and that motion is very sudden. If you want to show someone that motion, you might not be able to because it uh, disappears so suddenly. <clears throat> and <clears throat> that is the motion or movement barely noticeable. So that is khannas. Then khannasa, when the person remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, shaitan steps back. So this is khannas, basically al-waswasa. What was al-waswasa? Waswasa, uh, al-waswas is basically the attack of shaitan. So it is referring uh, when shaitan attacks, when shaitan put waswasa, a whispering or a negative feelings or negative suggestion in our hearts. This is uh, al waswas. So this is attack. And then this person has taken the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, A'uzu billahi minash shaitan rajim. What's going to happen? Now this shaitan has gone, uh, take a pause and he moved back, uh, like uh, he steps back. So that is Hanas, the one who steps back. We, uh, and uh, uh, this Khuns Ha Noon Seen also means, so this is one meaning, the one who steps back, okay? Second meaning, we can uh, take it, the one who makes someone delay from something important. So that is uh, Hanas. Pro, um, procrastinate on important things. Hopes he make us delay important things. And what could be the more important than purpose of life, right? The purpose of uh, uh, life to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? To do his ibadah, that is our purpose. And he is going to make us delay on it. We have limited time on earth. He make us delay things keep saying not yet, not yet, until we see our death, right? For example, I heard the virtues of charity, right? I want to do it. I make my intention right, okay, I'm going to do it. But what's going to happen? He is going to make me delay. Okay, you, uh, you can do it later, right? So not yet, not yet. Okay, you are busy, let's do this. And after that, I'm gonna sit on my computer and e-transfer that money to this particular uh, center or whatever charity you wanna do. But he is going to make us busy with the uh, stuff and trying to make us forget about it, right? Or 
we decided one day we heard a, a great uh, khutbah about learning your deen and you really made up your mind okay i want to learn the tafsir of quran i want to learn my deen i need to fix my lifestyles according to my deen but what gonna happen and this uh, shaitan when you come home um, uh, or uh, in your routine then he gonna say okay are you crazy you look at your routine how busy you are where are you gonna get time to get all these uh, uh, like uh, learning time you don't have that much time you you are doing job and uh, only weekend you have you have to do grocery laundry and all many other chores you have to do how are you going to get time and then you're going to say okay maybe uh, like when my kids are all grown up and then inshallah i'm going to do it and even when your kids are grown up you're not going to do it why not i'm too old now right and then we're going to have a big regret in our graves that i have delays thing right and that is literally a picture a scene is captured uh, by allah subhanahu wa taala in quran e pak that uh, you know that um, on era uh, when people will see that uh, some people are racing alhamdulillah may allah make us among them that uh, they have uh, so much light of iman that they like all these crossing the uh, sirat al mustaq uh, this sirat um, uh, that uh, pul sirat and uh, all that right so it was all easy for them subhanallah and they end up uh, in jannah and then these people who were struggling and they didn't have enough imani light that they can walk walk in and then what gonna happen a wall fall down in between the the people who are successful and the people who were kind of struggling couldn't make to jannah and then wall is dropped in between and now these people are so surprised that why we end up over here so they are going to call because they see some of their friends they are on the other side on the successful side so they are going to ask aren't we with you guys in in the world like we were together so how come we end up over here so what would be the response of these ashabul jannah they would say yes you guys were with us but what uh, happened you guys were keep uh, delaying things okay you were going to some uh, uh, parties that you were not supposed to where uh, all these uh, you know, wine and everything was being served and you said no i can handle myself better not a big deal right so you and you keep delaying good things oh i, I will do it i will do it not yet no not yet so that is uh, is going to be a big regret for these people on the day of judgment and that is the uh, tool of shaitan to make us delay okay so then um, we need to be aware of now we are learning so now we need to be aware of it that whenever an opportunity of learning any deen or any uh, goodness or any Uh, like uh, like opportunity is coming in our way we should not delay it right so we need to uh, like uh, even praise for it um the command of allah subhanahu wa taala is that uh, believers should raise in good deeds right but unfortunately we raise in what in worldly matters oh that uh, my friend got a big house now i have to get a bigger house she got that car i need to get a like a next brand better brand than this car right so this this is what we are competing alhaqu muttaqasur hatta zurtum almaqabir this is really eye opening right 
So procrastination is one of the greatest weapon of shaitan. He want us, uh, he want to destroy our iman, our values, and our good deeds by corrupting our intentions. Right? Sometimes we start a good deed with a good intention, but as we go along, he start corrupting our intention. Right? Because he does not want us to uh, like keep uh, did this good deed. He want to uh, have a share out of it. And he want to uh, corrupt that uh, uh, whole good deed because we know that if our intention is not uh, uh, completely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then these kinds of deeds are not going to be accepted. So that is very um, scary and that uh, we need to keep an eye on uh, our intentions. And then another thing, vasvasa are just sounds. But khannas is more like gestures or facial expressions. So that is also an implication of khannas, like it can be facial expressions. And then khan is, is there is some file over here, right? Um, as we said that Muvasvisu uh, should be used over here in the same way uh, from uh, Khanasa, the Khanis should be used. Khanis is the regular some file, but Khanis is not used over here. Rather, Khanas is used over here, which is again Mubalga um, form, right? So Khanas is Issa Mubalga continuously steps back and forth. So he is not going to give up. Yes, you remembered Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and now he, he cannot stay over there. He's going to go back. And now he is going to find a moment when we are, uh, our uh, tongue or our mind is uh, uh, empty from the uh, zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our weak moment. So he is going to wait for the weak moment and he is going to attack again. And this is how he did with the Hazrat Adam al -Islam. Right, so that was not was just one time was wasa. He keep coming to Hazrat Adam al Islam and keep suggesting, keep suggesting, and this is uh, how he did with Hazrat Adam. So how we can be safe from his uh, is uh, his was wasa and his being as khannas. So khannas continuous doer. Right, it is like a pattern of khabbaz. What is khabbaz? Uh, hoops is uh, bread, right? Hoops is uh, bread, and then uh, khabbaz uh, is a bread maker. And we uh, does that uh, khabbaz make one bread all day? He is doing the same thing over and over. I don't know how many bread he makes in a day. And the next day, same thing, right? So we can see how much repetition. So quality and quantity, both are there, khabbaz. And then we have the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the same pattern, wahhab, the one who gives gift. So he every second he is giving gift of breath to me, right? Even though I'm not asking, right? So continuous uh, giver is wahhab. And then Ghaffar, Ghaffar, we can say that how many mistakes we make in one day, but he keep for, uh, forgiving us, right? He does not hold us accountable for our uh, small things. Um, uh, we realize, we ask uh, forgiveness, even though maybe we are not uh, very sincere in our forgiveness, still he is going to forgive us. Right, so this is uh, Ghaffar, same pattern. So his uh, uh, al waswas as I said before, is the um, offense, is the attack of uh, shaitan. And al khannas is basically the defense because he steps back when we, uh, um, we take a protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins uh, with us asking Allah 
humbly from the unseen danger so allah subhanahu wa taala is uh, that is the mercy of allah subhanahu wa taala uh, that uh, he is uh, alerting us that there is unseen danger because we cannot see you know, all these this adu mo bin right and uh, we will not know that uh, this prompting that is coming from our heart actually it is the waswas of shaitan if prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and allah subhanahu wa taala does not tell him right so now we know that okay actually these are the waswas these are from shaitan so unseen danger allah subhanahu wa taala is uh, making us aware and uh, asking us that we need to humble and take protection of allah subhanahu wa taala and then uh, beautiful aya uh, and uh, one aya already i uh, yeah i think that is uh, the same aya that i was referring before so walakinnakum fatantum so it says fatantum right so tum is uh, antum so you all fatantum you all put yourself in fitnas basically they are uh, ashabul janna is uh, answering over here that you all put yourself anfusakum yourself into fitnas fitna of this world temptation of all this world right you follow the shaitan's whispering you followed your desires you does not want to uh, give up on any desires you some people are literally like uh, uh, out of their uh, desires right they have to listen to their themselves and this is how uh, we see all these uh, uh, phrases that okay uh the life is given once right so we need to live so listen to yourself whatever you desire just do it that is basically the message we are getting all around us so walakinna kum fatantum anfusakum so you put yourself in fitna one mistake secondly what a rabbastum so tarabbasa mean to um, delay and you delayed in doing good uh, good deeds var tab tum and you were uh, very uh, like kind of uh, in uh, uh, in doubt so you were doubtful about okay is, is it really day of judgment is going to happen right or you were really is really god is there so var tub tum is that truly the book of allah subhanahu wa taala is that truly the hadith of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam right so we doubt things we doubt our deen war tabtum wa gharratkum subhanallah and you were deluded deluded by what deluded by the waswas uh, of shaitan right so these these were uh, the things that they couldn't end up in uh, with the sahabul janna even though they were together in this uh, world they were Uh, like uh, uh, they know each other in this world so that means maybe they have uh, uh, they were uh, in the company of each other but one end up somewhere else and other end up in somewhere else in a good place and a bad place so waswasa might not sound dangerous to us but allah subhanahu wa taala is telling us that these whispering can be very powerful because we can see the result people are not ending up on the right place why because of this waswasa so that can be very powerful he uses people around us so he is not himself alone rather he uses people around us people suggestions advices and pressures can impact on us so true right even though uh, you are a good soul but you are in a company where people doesn't care about the deen or uh, the sharia or the commands of allah subhanahu wa taala what gonna happen when you keep listening when we hear something and uh, even though maybe at first place we we do not want to do it right but uh, when you keep hearing something over and over you start kind of uh, and believing on that uh, concept and you start doing it then right so that is really important 
So basically any action um, start from hearing. We f first of all, we hear something, then kind of we start believing and then it comes into our actions. So guidance or misguidance related to what we hear, internalize, right? So this is Quran are the words we hear, basically, right? Subhanallah, these are the words we hear in recitation. And then we plant these words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we believe in, in them in our heart, right? So this is how we get the guidance. And in the same way, if we hear the vaswasa of shaitan, we plant in our heart this wrong feeling or negative feeling, and then what gonna comes out? Obviously, something evil through our actions. So we hear and imply people's suggestion and idea. So we need to be very careful when we are suggesting, making advice to someone. Even though when we are mad, we should not be saying something uh, very negative or evil about someone because that scar for, uh, to anyone throughout their life. Um, maybe we do that with our kids, right? Sometimes we are scolding them so bad and uh, saying uh, something that can uh, uh, have negative impact on their personality, right? So we need to avoid that because uh, these, uh, right, maybe at that time, we are being the source, um, like a vehicle of uh, shaitan at that time to pass negative feeling to, um, because what's going to happen? Kids are not going to be happy about it. They are going to be very upset or they're going to have a negative feeling, negative impact on their uh, uh, personality. And this is not going to make them a good person then. Right, so we need to be very careful about it. So this vaswasa of shaitan, even though look like just a suggestion or ideas, but they can be very powerful and that can scar people. So we need to be very careful when we are uh, talking to someone, um, especially we need to avoid any negative feelings. Okay, then, min sharril waswas al khannas subhanallah time runs so fast huh so over here we are going to talk about uh, a hadith over here which is uh, going to refer about khannas so who is this uh, uh, khannas uh, basically uh, the hadith of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is ما منكم من أحد إلا وقد وقيل به قرينه من الجن. So uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is saying that uh, there is no one that وقيل uh, mean like uh, it is fixed, like it is made. Uh, uh, there is someone assigned. Uh, who is the uh, assigned for us? Is Karim. So every human being has a kareem, every human being. So basically when a child born, a shaitan child also born with that person, with that child. Yes, we, uh, uh, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is subhanallah ta'ala, uh, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so merciful that uh, he, even though he has created shaitan, with us because uh, why because uh, that was the dua or uh, request of uh, iblis so iblis said that uh, i need someone to help me out when he uh, kind of uh, asked allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that give me some time uh, i i will prove that i can uh, i can uh, like end up taking uh, most of the mankind in the hellfire with me and I, you need to give me a kind of helper. So this request was granted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by giving him a kareen. So every human being has a kareen. But uh, then the dua of Hazrat Adam alayhi salam, 
Hazrat Adam Alayhi Salam said that, uh, Oh Allah, you have uh, given help uh, uh, to Shaitan by giving him Kareen. So Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala said that, uh, and even uh, through Ahad is we know that uh, we have so many angels to protect us throughout uh, our life, right? Uh, that's why we see that uh, sometimes, um, especially when we are traveling, how close we can be to be in, in any accident, right? And sometimes we are into very severe or bad accidents, still we are all protected. How? Because the angels were there to protect us, unless it is our death is written, right? So uh, the point is that, that we have a Kareen, but we have angels too. But uh, we are talking about Kareen over here. Uh, so every human being has a Kareen and uh, someone, some uh, companion asked that uh, Prophet Muhammad do you have a Kareen as well? And uh, he answered a beautiful answer. He said, yes, I have a Kareen as well, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helped me against him and uh, now this Kareen is Muslim, subhanAllah. He is Muslim and he never tells uh, me anything except to do good. So subhanAllah, that is amazing, right? So basically Kareen is uh, um, a shaitan or a devil or a helper of shaitan. Uh, and uh, and uh, basically he... Uh, always try to prompt something evil uh, to us. So everyone has a devil Kareen who tries to encourage the person to do wrong or evil when there are choices, right? For example, I have a choice to go to a movie theater or I can listen to a lecture, right? So the pressure on me through maybe my friends or uh, uh, whatever the vehicle of shaitan at that time is, um, or my nafs itself, maybe it's going to prompt me to go to theater, right? I can listen to the lecture later, no worries. So let's go and have fun. So he uh, is always going to uh, prompt us to the wrong suggestion. And then when we make some wrong suggestion, he is going to justify on that beautify for our fault. Literally, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in quran Pak that he is going to beautify uh, their good deeds to them. So if we, the shaitan is overtake us, uh, like if we are overtaken by shaitan, mm -hmm. then our, to us, our good deeds, uh, sorry, our evil deeds are not going to look bad to us. We always have a justification for that. We're always going to say, no, no, it's okay. The Ramadan is in two months. So inshallah, I can do some uh, uh, extra ibadah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so forgiving. He is going to forgive me. So let me enjoy at that moment right now. Right? So he is going to always beautify and justify our faults. Make us judge people's intention or show us our evil deeds smaller and our good deeds bigger and bigger. That is also a, a tool of shaitan. So when we do something evil, um, he is going to justify us, right? And he is going to show us that evil did very small. Oh, it's okay. Everyone does that. Why are you being so like uh, uh, agnostic about it, right? So just uh, chill out, right? No worries. Everyone does that. So don't be very extremist over here, right? So he is going to make our end. If we do any good deal, then he is going to make it huge, a big deal. Oh, you did that. I prayed uh, Juma prayer uh, in masjid, right? So you are kind of uh, um, out of boundaries. Right, so he is going to say, "Oh, you did a really uh, great job, right?" And after that, I can do anything now since I already gathered so many reward. 
then we already talked about angry right so he can make us angry and upset on petty things the things that doesn't matter at all but we are going to be very upset on it right because when we are angry we can e uh, he can easily overtake us that is the reason he want us to be angry and we can make us uh, we can he can make us do and say things which can be very regretful throughout our lives we see that in anger people kind of uh, uh, divorce especially men and what do they say after it oh i was in anger right so we say and do things uh, that we are not supposed to say and do uh, in anger and uh, that wife is is she going to be happy about it even though we know that okay after first uh, uh, talaq there is still chance right but there is scar so and that he can does that right our suggestions our comments looks can be very uh, long lasting impact on our families so especially i already talked about it right so uh, sometimes we do not say anything but our look looking at someone in certain way can be very scarring to that person right so and uh, we know that allah subhanahu wa taala is recording even though uh, that person cannot say anything because you didn't say anything right and you can deny the look but allah subhanahu wa taala is recording and he he knows our feelings and that can be uh, this is how basically he uh, kind of impact our relationship with people and with the community by having negative feelings about someone someone did uh, once something wrong with me and i'm not going to forget forever even though now this person is uh, kind of realize it and now i can see that this person is doing something good but still i'm going to kind of judge that person's intention thinking no that can person that can, person cannot be right he there sh should be some negative uh, uh, intention over there right so this is how we do or uh, we think about people and, uh, and we know that uh, uh, as a muslim we are supposed to take ummah together so first we need to have uh, like a good feelings about our families and then these families go uh, and visit friends right so we need to be like uh, very open to our friends no negative feelings about them and then this is how we form a good community right and then on a side note i'm going to just finish uh, the, that is the last thing inshallah to discuss then there is a hadith about uh, ramadan is coming right and we say that okay in ramadan uh, shayatin are changed but there is a difference of opinion about it some scholar says that uh, uh, this is all shayatin are changed and some says no only the major shayatin are changed and this kareen the literal meaning of kareen is someone is always with you so he is not going to leave us until we die so that means this uh, kareen is always there with us even in ramadan this kareen is there and uh, why then uh, in ramadan we will see that okay some people are kind of uh, control their temptation uh, what they will do outside ramadan the scholar give a reason they say that uh, in ramadan we are in a zoom of ibada right <clears throat> when we remember allah subhanahu wa taala a lot then what happen the screen get weak and he 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 is not able to prompt us as badly as he can do outside when, uh, ramadan when we are not 
uh, in that much remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, uh, that reminds me of one, uh, I don't know, it is, uh, I, I should call hadith or whatever. Uh, I think uh, he, uh, he was Abdullah bin Umar or someone else, if I'm mixing up, that once uh, he's, uh, or Abdullah bin Masood, um, his Kareen came out in front of him. And <laughs> this poor Kareen was so weak that, uh, first of all, uh, uh, this companion asked that, who are you? So he said, I'm, a, I'm your Kareen. So he said, okay, why you are so weak? He said that because uh, you are so much into Ibadah, right? So you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that much that that's why I am weak. So this is the basically in uh, Ramadan, but the same thing happened with our Kareem because we are in remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so much. And that's why our Kareem get weak and he is not able to uh, prompt us as much as he can uh, outside the Ramadan. So subhanallah, may Allah make us among the people uh, who always uh, uh, stay in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, may Allah uh, make our cream weak and weak and weak so he cannot prompt us uh, any evil things. So with that, inshallah, we can end our session. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Quran al-Hakim wa nafani wa iyaakum bi ayati wa zikri al-Hakim subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika nashadun la ilaha illa anta wa nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayka.